What's going on, golf fans? It's your boy, GS Luke, here with our DFS core plays for this week's Wells Fargo Championship. Gonna break down the top end of the DraftKings pricing, bring you an idea of four foundational plays that I'll be using in my GPP lineups, and try and get some leverage to the field and hopefully take down some contests like plenty of our community members were able to do last week. On top of having Tony Fina as an outright a winner, one of our core plays last week, John Rahm, of course, a prominent feature of our player pool was up there in the top three. We had guys like Akshay Patia, Will Gordon in contention, Steven Yeager, Patrick Rogers, who backdoored a little top 10 action for us. Even Ben Martin had a respectable week. So really, Ryan, some of that momentum into this week were on a little bit of the heater. The prop side was maybe not as hot as what we had over there for DFS, but certainly looking forward to this week. This championship caliber golf course and elevated field designated status like we've had for a few of these big events so far uh, should be an absolute banger weekend so here in this video at the top end of the pricing going to identify four of those top core plays that like i said are going to be foundational pieces that i'm getting a ton of leverage to right not just getting that 2x mark and a lot of cases here we're getting closer to three even 4x leverage to the field and really trying to make these our defining pieces so without further ado Let's go ahead and uh, hop into this week's core play. As we typically do with these videos, let's take a look at our key stats and get an idea for the sort of metrics I'm using to identify these top plays. And just like Vedanta Vallarta, this is a big hitters course, a championship major championship type of golf course. So when we're taking a look at these stats, it's no surprise to see driving distance up there, 12.5% um, rating. Uh, we have also got a lot more emphasis on the long iron ranges than most weeks. That 175 to 200 yard range is going to be utilized much more at this kind of golf tournament than what you'll see for most. The 200 plus yard ranges are also a little bit more important here. In terms of your putting, we've got Poa Tribulus Greens. So looking at that, the par four scoring from 450 to 500, um, that is by far the most prominent type of hole this week. So we're looking at that. Around the green, you've got some really tricky shots here around Quail Hollow. Course is over 7,400 yards. It's a 7,500 yard par 71. Uh, so you definitely want to look at some of the longer tracks on tour, par five scoring. And then for our comps, we've got the Innisbrook Copperhead course. So that's the home of the Valspar. You've got the Torrey Pine South course. That's the main course for the Farmers Insurance Open. Um, also the course they used for the U.S. Open over there at Torrey Pines. And then Bay Hill Club and Lodge, the home of the API. All three of those tracks are long ball striking tests. We are not only going to be tested into greens, but also off of the tee. Now, different obstacles at each course. Valspar, similar kind of tree line set up to what you're going to get this week. At Torrey Pines, it's more of the rough. And then at Bay Hill, it's also much more of the rough and some water in play too. But in either circumstance, it's the guys that are, you know, your ball striking specialists that you see routinely winning these golf tournaments or at least getting themselves in the top five, top 10. So um, you take a look at those golf courses, distance off the tee, approach play, specifically those long irons at this track. And you've got yourself a recipe for a pretty good course fit there. So in terms of our plays now, we're going to start off with Rory McIlroy, and you're going to hear a million people talk him up here. So we're not going to spend the most time on him, but he's a winner at this event, finished in fifth last year. But I'll remind you in 2022, it's why we've got the two asterisks here. Um, it was not played at Quail Hollow, right? It was at TPC Potomac. So um, brushing that aside, he's got a win, a T8 and a T16 finish his last three starts. And from a prototype standpoint, um, he's exactly that. He is the prototype for this golf course. He's got the distance we're looking for, that long iron play, the ability to just sky rocket balls up into the stratosphere and have them just land so softly on those greens. Um, he can birdie those long par threes, those 200 plus, even 240 yard plus um, par threes, um, those 600 yard par fives. He's one of the few players in the world that'll be going for all of them and looking to be aggressive on almost every single hole. So it's no surprise that he has a win at this track. Um, the recent form is the one real reason to stay away from him. If you take a little bit more of a zooming out picture, right? If we look at the last 36 rounds as opposed to um, last 12 rounds, which would be more considered recent form. Um, it looks great, right? 0.7 strokes per round off the tee, nearly a stroke per round on approach, um, getting in all four categories. But if we zoom in, it's not quite as pretty, right? He's still gaining with the ball striking, but the putter falls off, the around the green, um, is not nearly as sharp as it, what it as what it was before. So, you know, I think a lot of people that are putting in their custom modeling that are looking at that recent form um, might be a little bit scared off of Rory McIlroy, and he for sure is going to be chalk. 
he's going to be like 25, maybe even 30% out. Um, I know he's expensive. He's probably priced where he should be for this slate. Um, I know there's guys at Cantlay that are going to get attention. Your winner from last week, Tony Finau, right? Great course fit here too. So I think he'll get some attention. But Rory McIlroy, a lot of the casuals are going to flock to him. So later in the week, I think a lot of people are going to consider a fade of Rory. But I don't think that's going to you know lower his ownership to like 20% um, or lower that sort of thing. That'd be great. Right? I'd love that. But I want to warn against doing so. He is the best course fit here he loves this golf course and he needs to get something going right he has not played to his standards this year and i know is the win at the cj cup to bank on but that was all the way back in the fall right he's he's yet to really do anything in 2023 of substance out here on the pga side so um eleven thousand dollars i think that he's as hungry, I think that's a huge positive for Rory McIlroy, the fact that he needs to get it moving. Um, and at a golf course that has been a get-right spot for him in the past, um, pretty much the prototypical build for it, I think it's a great spot to get to him. I mean, in the recent form, just to show you, right, he hasn't played much on the tour of late, missed the cut at the Masters. That, of course, was a, a huge huge problem for him and, and the reason why i think a lot of people might have consider fading him here but this is a perfect track actually even better for him than in augusta national i know a lot of people say that augusta is like a perfect fit for rory well this is truly the perfect fit for rory right where you have to be both long and accurate off the tee around augusta you can pretty much just be long off the tee and get away with it um not so much the case here at the wells fargo so yeah, i'll definitely be playing rory but i'll say i'm just saying this you're gonna see a lot of people that end up talking themselves out of them by the time it gets to wednesday and uh, I'm just playing my flag right now. I do not care the ownership number on Rory McIlroy. Um, kind of like a John Rahm last week. I'm going to be all in on him here. Next up, we've got ourselves Victor Hovland, $9,200. And his first time ever playing here, he surprised me. Came out here, killed it, finished T3 um, there in 2021. The shots gained of late have been what you'd expect from Victor, right? Gaining off the tee, gaining on approach. The short game, a little bit left to be desired. But the more and more we zoom in on his stats, the better they get, right? Gaining close to a stroke per round off the tee over a stroke per round on approach and uh, very much so on brand with the short game stuff. What I like about this golf course for him is that we've seen some sorry putters and sorry around the green players find success. And a lot of it is just because of the ball striking, right? You can separate yourself from the field with the ball striking and you're going to have to have a good week putting. That is very obvious, particularly in this strength of field, right? You're not going to be able to just get it done with the ball striking, but Victor's a pop putter, maybe a little bit inconsistent with the flat stick, but that T3 finish is what gets me excited here, right? A few years ago, he seemingly figured out the, the puzzle on the greens, and it's his only start, so we can't look into it too much. It's not like we have a full sample size of all top finishes um, here at Quail Hollow, but considering the course fit, considering how good he is off the tee, right, one of the straightest and longest players on tour, um, not on a McElroy level, but nobody, nobody's on Roy McElroy's level, right? He's uh, the leader of the next tier, we'll say, here with Victor Hovland. I love the off the tee fit. I love the fact that he has that success at this golf course. And kind of like Rory, he's going to be chalky, but he's one of those plays that I'm just going to stick my flag behind um, and not worry about the ownership come Wednesday. There are spots to differentiate in that 7 and 8K range. Um, just more of a strategy that I've started to embrace more of late, just taking some of the chalk and you know trying to make my stands elsewhere because talking yourself off of some of these course plays um, just because they're getting a little bit more ownership is a little bit silly to me. And based on my results over the last two, months. Um, they've definitely been um, some of the best I've had for the last year or so. Um, I, I'm going to stand behind this strategy. It's worked out well. Um, and I think a lot of people talk themselves out of really good plays just because of ownership. And, you know, if you kind of tell yourself beforehand, these four or five players, I'm going to play no matter what ownership they're at. I think that's okay, right? But when you get to Wednesday, right, the guys that you necessarily don't make those stands on, that's where you make those ownership decisions, right? Like, Let's say Morikawa, who I don't love this week, right? He's like 20% owned on Wednesday. I'm, I'm fading him, right? He's not one of my top plays. If he's getting all that steam, maybe you avoid him. But, you know, you really like Victor Hovland this week. And, you know, I'm one of the people that's definitely going to be there on him. Um, I don't think you should fade him come Wednesday if he is getting that ownership because that should be to be expected, right? He's one of the best plays on the slate. Like, there's a reason why he's one of the first guys you want to click on. So um, know that a lot of other people are going to share that sentiment and, Unless you're comfortable with that, um, don't don't make him one of those core plays for yourself. But I love Victor here. I like the event history. Um, the recent form, especially over the last 12 rounds, has just been outstanding, especially with the ball striking. And a player I want to get exposure to. 
Next up, we've got Cam Young, another bomber off the tee. Um, he's approaching that Rory level, right? Like, I know Victor Hovland, an elite level driver. Um, Cameron Young would be an elite level plus driver, like borderline Rory level when it comes to it. Um, over the last 36 rounds, you're not going to find a better player off the tee. 0.6 shots per round, 0.3 shots per round on the approach. Um, so for this range, by far the best in terms of your ball striking. Um, the short game categories, much like a Hovland, leave a little bit to be desired. So though we don't have course history here outside of the last year at Potomac, which you can throw out the window, right? Completely different golf course. I'm expecting a similar kind of fit to Victor Hovland, right? Their shots game profiles are eerily similar. They make a ton of birdies. They're one of the you know, best par five scorers on the PGA Tour, right? When you put their shots game profiles next to each other, if you had a blind test, you'd have a really hard time differentiating between a Cameron Young and a Victor Hovland. So, and even the similar ball flight, right? Both of them like to hit the ball that's falling from left to right. A little fade action, a little butter cut, as some would call it. Um, in a $8,700, I do think that he's going to get some steam, but he's yet again, another player I'm willing to get to. The recent form has been there. He's been a little bit sneaky, right? T51, okay, that's not what we want from you know him, but T7 at the Masters, right? People forgetting about that. Uh, a couple top 10 finishes before it, a little bit volatile. He's mixed in a few missed cuts, um, but all of these you know, players that struggle around the green, maybe struggle on the greens every once in a while, are going to mix in a few missed cuts, a few bum performances. It's that when they pop with the flat stick, you're looking at a borderline win or at least a top five every single time. So um, love them in GPPs, love the upside, love the driving. That's really what we're looking at here. And though he doesn't have experience here outside of the President's Cup here over, uh, what was that, like six months ago at this point, um, I don't think it's all that much to worry about, right? He got a few rounds in then, right? So he's going to be a lot more experienced than most rookies at Quail Hollow. And if he learned anything on the greens there, can try and use that experience. Um, his experienced caddy, I want to mention there as well. Right, he has Webb Simpson's caddy now in the bag. Um, Paul Tesori. Well, Webb is from Charlotte. Paul Tesori and Webb play Quail Hollow all the time when they're just having practice rounds out there in the area. Um, there is not a better caddy to have in the entire field than Paul Tesori for Cameron Young. So I like that form. I like the President's Cup experience. The off the tee play, uh, sign me up for some Cameron Young. I'm going to have him in bunches. And the last core player we'll touch on, and I'll remind you, if you want access to all of my modeling, right, so everything that's blacked out, ownership, player pool as it goes on throughout the week, check out my Patreon page. Um, but somebody that... I have a sneaking suspicion is going to go a little bit under the radar this week. So unlike the top three core plays, is Tommy Fleetwood. And it has to do with his last start. And, you know, I don't know what it is about this, right? If you're not finishing top five, people don't care. T15 finish at the Heritage, oh, whatever, just expected for Fleetwood. T33, okay, T3 at Valspar. This guy has quietly been getting it done, and off the tee of late is what has me excited because everything but off the tee for Fleetwood, we know he's world-class. Approach play, one of the best iron players. Around the green, one of the best around the green players on tour. The putter above average, right? I'm not going to call him elite with the putter because um, he can leak strokes there from time to time, but off the tee is not the best player. But of late, has been gaining 0.3 strokes per round, and that is why you've had this recent stretch of form, right, where he's gone T15 as a T3 finish before the Valspar, right, Players' Championship, um, API, right, was up there in contention at those events as well. The reason was with the driving. The driving has been carrying him of late. So at eight grand, when you compare some of the other players here, like a Brian Harmon to him, I'm expecting Harmon to be a lot more chalky than Fleetwood at that same price tag because he's got the win. He's gaining 0.6 strokes per round off the tee or 0.9 strokes per round if you look at the last 12. Just ridiculous stuff, right? The issue is, is that from green, from fairway in, we'll say approach play, around the green play putter, Fleetwood is just a much better player. And unless you're putting a ton of stock into that win for Brian Harmon, um, I think Fleetwood's just the better play. And I think we're going to get him at lower ownership numbers. So um, love him there at eight grand. A few of the other guys around him, Thigala, you got to worry about the driving accuracy. Same thing for like a, a Shane Lowry, for example. Um, Corey Connors, actually pretty decent play, but like the most complete player in this range that we usually take a difficult major championship type of test, right, is a Tommy Fleetwood. And I would classify, well, Quail Hollow, right, the Wells Fargo, this course, as a major championship sort of test. So love Fleetwood. I, you know, the event history leaves a little bit to be desired, right? He did have a T14 there two years ago, but had a missed cut there four years ago, um, which is slightly troubling. Um, but I'm not looking into course history all that much because you look at this for Max Homer, right? Missed cut, win missed cut and then he won at potomac right but two of the three years at quail hollow right over his last five are, are two missed cuts and then a win so 
Um, players can snap out of it here. I mean, course history helps, but it's it's not the end all be all. So for Tommy Fleetwood, hopefully he improves on that T14 finish and uh, this time gets us something there in the top five, top 10, which would be fantastic for those large field GPPs. Alrighty guys, that is all I've got for the core plays video. As per usual, appreciate all the support here on the channel. Go ahead, smash that like button on your way out of here, and go ahead and let me know in the comments who you think is going to win this golf tournament. For me, I'm going to go ahead and take Cameron Young. I love the Paul Tesori connection. I like the course fit. I like the fact that he doesn't have course history here, so hopefully won't be an insanely popular pick. But either way, would love to hear your comments down below, so go ahead, leave me your thoughts down there and see you guys for some of the content throughout the week we'll have value plays dropping fades and sleepers of course our weekly dfs live stream which will be wednesday evening at 7 p.m eastern time make sure to bring all your questions to that that you have for me we'll go over some of the ownership there weather all of that sort of fun stuff and make sure that you're prepared to go out there and crush all of your GPP contests. Hopefully, I'll see a ton of you at the top of the leaderboard. Again, guys, appreciate all the support here on the channel. And I'll see you guys next time for the value plays.